Hi, my name is Drew Whiting. I'm an associate professor of saxophone at the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh. I'm also a Yamaha performing artist and Van Doren artist clinician. So my high music story starts when I first came to town. I, I remember for my interview at UWO, um, I drove into town and I got off on the South Park exit in Oshkosh and I'm like, oh shoot, I should really get some more reads. And so I stopped in right at the Hyde location there in Oshkosh and picked up a box of reads and you know checked around, you know checked out the store. And then as I've um, you know been in the, at UWO for some time now, I've gotten to know of course the Oshkosh store, but I often come up to Appleton, my favorite repair tech, Chris Feltz. <laughs> is here so he's been really great and really my relationship with Hyde has been really fantastic. You know, I like to do a lot of events at UWO and after I've been there for a couple years I really wanted to do a, a saxophone summit and just an event that really brought together saxophones from all over Wisconsin. And of course it was hard to kind of find funding initially and I really wanted to bring in uh, Jeff Coffin, who's the saxophonist with the Dave Matthews Band. Fortunately I talked to the folks at Hyde and luckily they were able to help me out and we were able to put on that event. And I, since I've continued that event, um, Hyde has always been there every single year as I brought in different artists and whatnot. So their support has really been fantastic and so all my students, you know, come to Hyde for their supplies. I made my students have bought sax their saxophones from Hyde. So it just continues to be a great relationship. It's interesting because that relationship, I think, just changes for everyone over time. You know, thinking back to when I first began you know, music as a as a sixth grader, and it was you know started as this fun kind of communal thing. And of course, I was really fortunate to have amazing band directors all throughout my middle school and high school experience. And as you know, I progressed in music. That relationship changed from being something fun and communal to being something that I'm really intrigued by. I'm really want. To I'm interested, I want to explore more to, oh, maybe I want to be a band director and maybe I should go to college for this. And now it's getting to the professional realm. And when I was in college, that relationship changed a lot because I realized that while I loved teaching, maybe I didn't want to be a band director, maybe I actually want to be a saxophone professor. <laughs> and so I changed to being a performance major. And so that relationship just changed over time. And so then as I, I became a professional, you know, music not only was like a professional means, but it was also something that just fed me spiritually, emotionally. Making music every day is a part of my life. It's my yoga, it's my meditation, but I'm also fortunate that it's my livelihood as well. I'm fortunate that both my parents are public school teachers. They weren't music teachers, but they're teachers. And so when I had my first band director, Kevin Krieger, he was also a saxophonist. He was you know, very inspirational to me, especially in the beginning. I remember pretty vividly, um, he would play Eddie Van Halen's solo on eruption. He'd play on saxophone. I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. I continue to have um, some other great experiences. Um, my other band directors, Steve Bratton in middle school. I get to high school. I uh, have Joel Shaner and Brett Kreiderman, um, who are both brass players, but it was one thing that was really great is that they both played in our local symphony. So for me, our, like, our, our educators weren't just people teaching me every day. They're people that I saw making music continually. So they were absolutely in inspiring to me. And then going to college, um, I studied with uh, Joe Luloff. He was my professor at Michigan State University for my undergraduate and master's degree. And so I've just been blessed that all, all along the way, teachers have been the people that have really inspired me the whole time. Uh, so I play a lot of new music. So I play a lot of music by um, that's been written, you know, really in the last 10, 20 years or so, or even most uh, concerts I end up giving are is music that's been written in the last year or so. I um, remember really vividly when I was in high school, I was a member of uh, University of Michigan had a youth band. And so I drive from Jackson to Ann Arbor and along the way, this is back when you bought CDs. <laughs> and uh, I would stop out of Borders every time I would go to rehearsal and I'd buy a new CD. And I didn't really know exactly what I was doing. <laughs> I would just, just pick up things randomly and I was, you know, being a saxophonist, I was really listening to a lot of jazz at that time. I really liked John Coltrane. And I did what probably you shouldn't do is I bought an album because of the cover. I uh, had no idea what was on it. So I buy the album, I go to rehearsal, and I just remember listening to the whole thing from beginning to end, not really knowing exactly what happened or what was going on in the music, but just being so, just being so touched by like just the intensity and the, just the visceral nature of the playing. I remember just parking my car and just sitting there 
for <laughs> for a long time just trying to uh, take in what what just happened so i think at that point in my life, I didn't know that was possible, or that was that was an avenue for music. But it, just, it obviously really struck a struck a chord with me, and so that was something I continued to pursue. Was kind of more experimental music and newer sounds. Um, another moment for me that was really special uh, was I got selected to perform a curated concert at Seamus. Uh, Seamus is the Society of Electroacoustic Music in the United States, and I got selected to perform a full concert, and I was the only. You know, that normally at Seamus Conference, it's all composers presenting their works, but this was me as a performer presenting a curated work at works for my colleagues. That was a huge moment for me, knowing that was my my path and my kind of my niche. Music for saxophone electronics just became a really important thing for, for me and my musical output. I love that there's a place I can send my students and I can confidently tell them like, all right, you need a new piece of music, right, just just go to Hyde. Or you need your saxophone repaired, all right, just go to Hyde, they're gonna take care of you. Or um, you're looking to buy a new saxophone, great, let's go to Hyde and let's try a bunch of saxophones and let's find the instrument that's right for you. And, like Having that resource right here is so valuable to, to, to someone because, I mean, yeah, you can look at it online, but it's not, it's not there. It's not in your hands that you can really like have that sensation or like see what that instrument really does. And it, it just makes all the difference. And you can read a review about saxophone, but that doesn't tell you. It really doesn't tell you anything. It tells you the specs, but it doesn't tell you how the instrument feels. It doesn't tell you how it responds when you play it. And so I think it's so important to have a physical presence, you know, in the Fox Valley and all over Wisconsin that if you are looking for music, you go to the this place and experience it. I think that's just really necessary and valuable.